Okay, this video is about um, open interest walls in terms of stock options and trying to predict the close on expiration date. So let's go to MaximumPain.com. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to look at the open interest chart for, um, we'll take a look at Apple. Uh, so this is the May 15th expiration. And what we can see is the max pain value is 302.50. Um, if you want to see exactly how I arrive at that uh, number, you can check out the video about how to calculate max pain using Excel. So if you download the option chain or the option data, it shows you exactly how to arrive at that number. Of course, the problem with, an apps, with a number like uh, max pain at 302.50 is it's a static value. Um, it's either yes or no. There's no, there's no wiggle room. Uh, open interest walls, on the other hand, do provide a range. Um, it's based roughly on the same concept as Max Payne. So if we take a look at the open interest graph, what we see is that the 302 strike, um, which is right here. So there's the puts, there's the calls. Um, this is the point where the option sellers lose the least amount of money, um, or the option buyers lose the most amount of money, which is what we call it Max Payne. Um, but what you can see is there's a high number of puts at the 300 value and there's a high number of calls at the 320 value. What this tells us is that um, if the stock were to close instead of at the 302, 302.50 value, it actually closes below the 300 value or above the 320 value, the option sellers lose um, a significant amount more money. Um, that's easiest to see with the with the call options, right? Um, if you're closing at 302, the only ones that are in that are in the money are the ones below the 302 strike. If you close above the 320, you can see there's several more thousand options because uh, you know you have these 16,000, these 12,000, these 20,000. So all these options would be um, well, I guess not the 320 if it closed at 320, but a lot of options between the 302 and 320 would actually be in the money. We want to see what that difference is. So if you scroll down to the bottom of the page, it actually shows you the open interest calculation, right? And we can find the 302 strike. And the 302 strike is basically saying, well, this is the lowest, this is the lowest, uh, or the least amount of money the, the option uh, sellers will pay out. This is uh, this is 80, almost 85 million. And so that's the point at which they pay out the least amount of money. You know, with the stock price and the options, well, I'm sorry, with the options as to where they stand today, you can see at the, the 310 value that they'd actually pay out almost 102.5 million. So, you know, it's less than it's less than 20 million more. But we climb up to the, the 320 value and you can see that it's actually already 182,000. So that's actually, I'm sorry, 182 million. So it's 100 million more. In other words, it's going to be it's going to cost the option sellers a hundred million more dollars to close at the 320 strike than it would the, the 30, 302.50 strike. Now, again, that's not saying the option writers or the market makers are manipulating the stock market. It's just saying they've hedged the options they've sold because again, it's the market maker selling the options when you try to buy them, and he actually is hedging his position to make sure that he doesn't take a position based on your option purchases, so, and he'll rebalance that hedge sure that he's he's neutral in the transaction so um, that rebalancing actually applies pressure towards the stock so we can see that that you know, if we wanted to play um, values other than max pain we can pay the open interest range which is or the open interest walls which is roughly 300 to 320 um, uh, one way to do that I believe the stock price today closed at 311 let's just take look at that it's actually a pretty significant down day um, down well that's okay it's not down that much it's only down one percent um, but 311 so there's probably not much room to merge in here so what could you do with the knowledge that it's probably going to stay between 300 and 320 well if you owned the stock if you owned 100 shares of stock you could actually sell you could actually sell let's say the 325 calls under um, under the conclusion that it's likely not to close above 320. 
And so what you can do is you can collect the premium on the options you sold, and these would expire out of the money, and you would retain your stock. So you actually get to collect the premium using that trade. Now if we look at, say, another strike, if we look at maybe the, the next week, right, the 522, we can actually see that uh, the high calls actually tend to be 315, and the high puts actually tend to be 290. So that's actually, it's actually quite close to the three line value. In this case, you can almost say that, it, that the stock is likely to close a little bit lower than this, right? You've got, you know, you've got um, the stock price is right here. Now here's the 310, or oh, sorry, not the 310, the 312. Here's the 310 and you're about 311. So what you could do is you could, you could short the stock expecting a slight down movement within the next week and a half um, going into this close. Now, of course, this is a weekly options expiration and I don't really like to forecast uh, that far out on a weekly, um, especially since we're not talking about the staggering number of options here. We've only got like 3,500 in the um, highest call, so that's not, that's not a strategy I would likely get into at the moment, but it is one to consider, and you can watch it as it gets closer, versus you can see here, you're talking about 20,000 options um, for the upcoming week, so the weeklies tend to get more of the volume the week that they're in play. But all this is an interesting strategy on how to try to determine a closing range for a stock price, and that works for any stock price, or, or theoretically, it's theoretically possible for any strong price to buy here and look at the range and determine what the possible values are. So that's a brief explanation of the open interest walls. I hope you enjoyed the video, and thank you for watching.